Good evening, Foxes fans. Well, <laughs> that was just like watching Brazil, wasn't it? <laughs> just in case you haven't heard, just in you've been on Mars or you've been out, the wife's taking you shopping or whatever, Manchester City 2, Leicester City 5. Uh, it was a Brazilian-like performance after the first 20 minutes, <laughs> and we are top of the table. Three wins, Three games, nine points, and um, we beat Man City. Who can remember what happened last time we did that at, uh, at uh, the Etihad? <laughs> we, we might just have gone on and had a good season. Anyway, we're going to look at the game, and we'd love your comments. Uh, comment in the uh, in the Facebook uh, bit. And uh, as normal, uh, if you're not signed into StreamYard, Please add your name at the end, otherwise I'll just have to call you Facebook user. And uh, and they said that if you like me, you've probably been called worse during the years. Anyway, you gotta be you gotta be happy. I know one other guy who is happy, and I've just found out the guy lives in Manchester, so this might be the last time we actually see him, and I might need somebody else to come on next week. But let's get him while he's still alive. Welcome, Brad. Hello, Chris. Yeah, I might have to hire some bodyguards over the uh, next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just start wearing a red top. You're allowed to through. Well, well, wear one of the Leicester red tops, then you'll get away with it. Hey, yeah, well. I, was, I jokingly said it, it was like watching Brazil, but that first 20 minutes, I mean, they scored after after four minutes. That that start was a little bit worrying, but after that, my God, where did that come from? I think that'll be like one of the unsolved mysteries of the world because I mean. After the first 20 minutes, I think every Leicester fan maybe just saw, ah, OK, right, OK, OK, after that first, like, five-minute shock start, I mean, yeah. I never thought I'd say this, but I agreed with a lot of what Graham Sooner said after the match, you know, any team can catch you off guard with a wonder goal, but, yeah. wow, what a plan, what an executed plan, and the word of the day on, on the aftermath is... I executed to perfection, that is surreal. I'm going to wake up in a minute, and it's going to be a dream, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll, come, I'll come up there and pinch you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, I mean, that start, and I, I looked at the squad, and I don't know what your thoughts were on the squad, and I looked at sort of, five, well, I was trying to work it out, and then it came up five across the back. I thought, oh, my God, we're, we're going to get a hammer in here. It just shows, obviously, Brendan knows a little bit more than me. And uh, it's his first win, and I didn't realise it. It's his first win as a manager over Manchester City, and what a way to do it. Yeah, you can't get more impressive than that. And there was a lot of things, again, Leicester have a habit of doing this over the last few years, but even in the um, even in the time that they won the league, Leicester did not start the season with three wins. That's the first time in the top flight Leicester have ever done that. And it was just an amazing performance all round. I felt... Um, you know, once they settled it, they were so structured and so disciplined in what we did all through the 90 minutes. We did not let that early start shake us at all. We stuck to the game plan that was obviously being worked on but as soon as the Burnley game finished. We obviously set this game plan in motion and you could not pick a fault with anybody out there. There was a, a, To a man, they were brilliant today and we just tore Man City apart on a perfectly executed by Brendan Rodgers and the lads. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know what that comment was. Somebody is obviously like, unlike, oh, he's speechless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Both there. Uh, Shandow Dave, just want to say hello. Welcome to the show, Shandow. Um, what a thrashing given to the mighty Man City. Vardy only 24 touches and he scores three. I, I put that up during the game, actually, that uh, a lot of the commentators were saying, you know, and at half time he'd only had eight touches. But Vardy is one of those players, you know, he doesn't, <laughs> you keep him on if he has only has five touches because you know. He might just get that touch that gets you a goal. Yeah, and it's not something new with Jamie Vardy. Uh, we've come to know, and the only thing that's different is he's not being asked to drop back 30 into his own box. And he even did that today on occasion. I think I think three or four of his touches were in our own half, especially in that first 20 minutes. But 24 and three of them touches were, were goals. I mean... I granted two from the penalty spot, but still they were fantastic yeah. penalties in the right. Tillemans was a, another there were three perfect penalties. 
Yeah. But, but I mean, I'm not the best at doing maths and working it out. How, how many shots is that to a goal you get in? Yeah, 20, <laughs> you know. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. My mind, my mind's just not going to compute that at the moment. My, my, the only, the only number uh, I've got in my mind at the moment is five. Yeah, and, and I said to you, didn't I? Five penalties, yeah. and you're like, it wasn't five penalties. I was like, no, I just <laughs> I've seen that many goals, and I didn't know where to go with it. But, but wow, well, let, what, a, let, what a conversion rate! It, it is, it is, and you know, obviously, <laughs> when he gets to that age, we are going to miss him like mad when he gets uh, to the point of not being able to play full ninety minutes all the time. But let's go back to that first twenty minutes or so, which reminded me very much of like how we started the West Brom game. We were away from home. We knew Man City were going to come at us. Um, well, and then obviously Mares goes and, and and does that. Wonder goal or should he have been uh, should he have been closed down? Um, I mean it's hard to say, isn't it? Because I mean if if on another day he hits that and it goes full forty yards wide and and, and we're not looking at, at a wonder goal, you, you, it happens in football. That it was a brilliant finish. He he did it for us enough times. I remember distinctly one goal. I think it was against um, Chelsea where he turned a defender inside out and bent it in off that post. Uh, to be fair, we cleared it well. We do dealt with the initial corner brilliantly. It was just one of them. I mean, we wouldn't be sitting here saying, oh, should we have closed down quicker if it had gone 40 yards wide? I don't think we could have done, reacted much quicker than we did. But it's the response. It's the yeah. response yeah. that was pleasing. The response was pleasing, obviously. And it, let's face it, 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 was a, it, it was a superb goal. And uh, yeah. you know, if, 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 well, I was going to say, if Madison had scored one of those, we'd have been going mad. But let's be honest with you, he did. Who well, needs Mares? Oh, we've got we've got Madison, you know. You've got, uh, you've, you've got two early contenders for goal of the season there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But you've got um, obviously, like I say, we we weathered that first twenty minutes. We I I couldn't see how we were going to get anything out of the game. Um, just shows what what we know. Yeah. <laughs> and that first twenty minutes, I was looking at it, thinking like, how many is this going to be? Especially when they they scored after four. But of course, normally it's Leicester that let in a goal just before half time. Man City went and did it with, with, a, yeah, with, that, with a penalty. I grant you, but hey, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you can say it might have been for a penalty. At the end of the day, it was a, it was a penalty. Uh, there was not an issue with any of the three penalties. Um, no matter, they weren't like stonewall clearance, and they weren't like bad tackles or anything, but they were penalties. And and that's the thing. They made three basic mistakes. And apart from that, Leicester, you saw it after the settle down because what happened was good is that the initial plan may have been shaken, but it wasn't blown away. And when we last played Man City, the plan maybe was blown away and we capitulated. We ended up losing that game 3-1 last season. And that was the start of, we all know what followed after that, after Christmas time. Um but this time, they stuck to the plan, they shook it off, they kept themselves composed, they kept it, and they had the chances. You saw before that, before the penalty, in, in I think it was like the 35th or 36th minute, you know, we had a couple of chances where all of a sudden Leicester were two on two with their back line and on another day could have, could have got level beforehand. And I think once we had that momentum, that early goal in the second half, Man City looked out of ideas. They really yeah. did, and that's something that takes a lot to do. It's it, regardless of injuries, because we've got our own injuries and our own problems. So they, you know, I'm not. I don't buy these excuses. I don't buy these excuses of oh, a rush start. Well, we're in the same bloody boat. I'm afraid. So yeah. they're not. I'm not. No, you're not having it, Man City fans. You're not having any excuses with me, and that's not just because no. of it. Every team's got to go through it. That um, that is that is a valid point because you know. I mean, I was speaking to. Um, uh, Ray, the Man City fan from um, City Fan TV uh, on Friday night on the Opposition View show. And as, um, oh, as a Facebook user here says, Rob, I believe, uh, Man City guy the other day said they were vulnerable. And yes, they were. Uh, I find it hard when you've got a team like Manchester City crying over injuries, when the team that they've got, you know, is, is full of some of the most expensive players in the world. But like you say, we were no different. 
and we'll come on to it later. But we, you know, we might be in a worse injury position now. But um, yeah, they uh, we, we we took it to them. Half time. I was glad when half time came, and it was uh, we were we were well in it then. We we turned it round, and then my God, I don't know what Brendan said at half time, but can we bottle it and use it every game? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, at half time, mate, I'd, I'd have snapped your hand off for that result. I thought we yeah. dug in. I thought if we play like that second half, dig in. I remember the pre-match, um, me and you talked about, after, no, sorry, the post-match after Arsenal, and we were talking about it, and I said, I would be happy with a decent performance and a result would have been the bonus. I'll let you read that comment, Chris, because it's too too long for me to try and read and speak at the same time. But yeah, I'd have been happy with the performance, and at half-time, I'd have taken another 45 minutes like that, and even if we'd have come away with our 2-1 defeat, I, I said it out loud to myself, even if we lose this game, if we put in a doggy performance like that and create a few chances and show the Premier League what we're still capable of and we can still fight with these big boys, I'll, I'll still come away happy. By God, I did not expect us to put four in the second half. Did not expect that. And I'm so happy we no. did. I mean, you can, you can argue that, you know... <laughs> Uh, there, were, there were penalties, but I don't care. You, you know, you, 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 if, you, know, could have been away. you know, if you don't want right? to concede three penalties, don't give away the fouls. Yeah. It's just exactly, as that. you know, you I mean, you're, you're talking about one of the best teams in the world, there, probably giving one of the worst performances. I can't remember the last time in, 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 in the back. exactly, and I can't remember the last time a Premier League team and somebody will come on and, and, and tell me, but you know conceded three penalties in one game certainly not yeah. when you know you're at man city's level you know uh but what james was saying there and I, i'll read it out here is um when are fans going to learn not to be so critical too early um i think that's just being fans isn't it we're critical from minute one of game one yeah um, uh, and I, uh, yeah yeah that's the, the but, sorry i'm trying to read it as well as you go on i know okay frustrating first 20 minutes but it was clear we had a game plan and we stuck to it worked uh at, worked our way back into the game and just about deserved to be level at the break came out second half and it was a perfectly executed game plan brilliant result brilliant game brilliant performance brilliant manager rogers knows exactly what he's doing he's obviously got a plan cd and, <laughs> and you've got to be happy haven't you i mean to be honest with you james did he summed it up there he did. Got it wrong. Uh, got, got it wrong. No, he got it right, Brad. Come on. James got that spot on. And again, a thing that was that is a very big talking sentence of every post-match. I know I've only watched the Sky one, but every one of them, even little whingy Mika Richards, even he begrudgingly kind of went, they perfectly executed the game plan. And we did. And you've got to give credit where it's due because that is something that me and you have talked about off stream and we've mentioned it a few times on stream that that has clearly been in the works for a plan b we've been crying out where's the plan b we haven't got a plan b no manager makes plan b there it is we've just proved we've got yeah. it we can be aggressive yeah. on the front foot when needs be and come up against a man city and do this to them we've yeah. got a plan b and a plan a now yeah okay that half time and it was one all and, you know i think we we sort of spoke on uh, on messenger but it was 77 percent possession to man city 23 percent possession to to us and they'd had three shots at that point we had had none we turned it total well i would say we turned it around we didn't turn it around because come the end of the game it was very similar 72 percent to 28 percent possession 16 shots for man city seven to to us although all our seven were on target um five of them hitting the back of the net i can think i said to you counter-attacking is like having ranieri back isn't it well it was it was definitely reminiscent of that and it just shows that you know we've got a a, a plan B, like I just said there, we've we've definitely developed ourselves into a, a patient team and we've just shown again for the third consecutive time that we're not going to allow a team to shape us out of our game plan. It could have been so easy and I think Leicester in times gone by before conceding an early goal would have rushed and panicked and maybe forgot the game plan and conceded two or three and then been an uphill battle. And the difference in that first half to the second half is while the possession uh, stat never changed, there was a big difference. Man City were on the front, 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 
front foot, I can't get my words out, I think the results messed my brain up. They were on the front foot, they were controlling the game, being, doing exactly what we come to expect from Man City. In the second half, they were getting picked off left, right and centre by us. And, and the reason they had to get the ball is because they were trying to get the ball and do something with it. And Leicester were like, what come at us? If you score from 40 yards or a Vincent Company goes in like he did a couple of seasons ago, then fair enough. But you're not going to score four goals, three goals or however many they need to get back into it. So when again, we was very happy to keep them at bay. And you could tell yeah. that they ran out of ideas. And that's why we won the game more importantly. We stopped our plan and Man City went, well, we can't do anything but shoot from 40 yards. Yeah. I just, uh, I'm going to put the post up again here. Uh, probably one of Brendan's best games as a manager since he joined us. That's from Lachlan. Good, good evening, Lachlan. And I say it's good evening, but actually Lachlan's coming joining us from Australia. So it's probably not evening over there. It's it probably midday-ish, I would guess. <laughs> yeah, good day. <laughs> put, put an extra prawn on the bar. Oh, I've been so, uh, so predictable. Oh, we're so so <laughs> with um, our Australian now. We've lost him as a friend now. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> probably. He'll never, he'll never blog for me again, you know. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we we are very quick. We are very fickle as football fans, aren't we? we we're very quick to criticise when things go wrong and think the sun shines out of people's bo bottoms when it goes right. But that's all about part of being um, be, being a football fan. But that that Madison goal, I mean, better than Mares. Yeah, I think I think you had three world class goals today. But I think for the emphasis, I mean, that was top corner. That, that was like an, a homing missile into the top corner. That has got to be, that that has got to be in goal, goal of the season contenders early days. That's going to be, if that's not goal of the month, there's something wrong with the with the panel that decides goal of the month because that was absolutely fantastic. Because, I mean, unless you're going to give Vardy, who who's just proven that Messi's a beat at Vardy with that finish as well. But God, God, that was absolutely arrowy in top corner. I mean, it was better for me than Mares. Ooh, and that my, Michael there, I think it is, has, has just said, yeah, Mad yeah, as well, but we'll carry on. Uh, yeah, it's Michael that said, lost in all of this, Madison's worldy. But let's let's look at Vardy's. Let's not forget Vardy's non-penalty goal today. We remind yes. me very much of one he scored for England. I think it was against yes, Germany. Germany. I, think it was his, I think it was his first, first goal for England as well. I think it was um, his yeah. first goal that he got for the Three Lions. Reminding me very much of that and sneaking in. And there's, there's so many good goals, isn't there? Yeah, it was. Uh, just a little nod. That's two world class keepers he's done that to. Noi was in goal for Germany and Edison to, today. Yeah. And may I just point out that's three games now Castagne's assisted. Talk about by mm. the transfer window. Forget all these talks of not getting enough in. I know, I'd st me personally, I'd obviously still like us to do more deals and get a few more players in. I'm not saying we don't. But talking about a bit of shrewd business, three assists and three games and one goal, not bad for a new player. No, not at all. Michael there saying, I presume Madison there was upset Brendan didn't start him. But I, I, can, I can understand why. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, we, 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 you know, we've, we've got injuries, we know. And let's have a look. We had three players go off today with possible injuries. Although Jamie said um, after the game it, it, it wasn't anything serious and he should be fit. But um, Evans, maybe that was precautionary. He yeah. was hobbling again. He had to come back because, you know, we, you know we'd lost Ndidi. Um Although I always think you can play a Marty, but uh, he had to come back and Pratt as well. That you know, two possible more injuries. Yeah, and look, I agree with the comment that you said. You, of course, when especially when a team's on form, as 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 Leicester mm. are before this game, going in, you know, going into this game, you know, you're going to, need to be disappointed not to start. But I think it's mm. fair to say Tillemans, Pratt. Um, you know, and the rest of that midfield would have been very hard done by to have been dropped to Madison just because he was fit to play. There was no logic behind, and and it paid dividends to not drop Tillemans and Pratt. And you know, it was an absolute perfect game, and you couldn't have asked for anything better. And Madison came on and got a goal anyway. So, and yes, I agree with that. Like Mendy, 
uh, an unsung hero today. He made a killer pass that got Barnes yeah. on his way to play the ball through for our equaliser. I'm very, yeah. very happy to see another solid game by Mendy, and it was fantastic to see Amati play well because he did a very solid job at the back. He did I a think, very solid yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. I, I've always liked Amati, and I think he, he's great because he's very much a utility player. Can play across the back four and also defensive midfield as well. And I mean, <laughs> it was his first start in two years, uh, and you're up against the likes of Man City. Uh, but I think he he was just getting into form for us before when he started to get his bad injuries. But him and Mendy, two if you want to call them fringe players, but two squad players that are proving their worth. Definitely, 100%. And that's that's a lot of, of, of work, not just to the players themselves. Obviously, they're keeping themselves at the top of the highest level to be considered when this sort of thing happens. You know, Mendy's obviously going to be a first teamer for a while um, with, indeed, his injury. Um, because I don't know how long the actual injury will keep him out before he's back on the training pitch. Is that twelve? Is that twelve weeks the injury, or is that twelve weeks including recovery? Whichever exactly. way it is. And and the thing is, another point I have to make out: Ricardo's back in a couple of weeks. Is he going to get into that team? That's something I never thought I'd say. Because Castagne is fantastic on the right, so he's not going to take that position. Is he going to take? Is he going to switch him and take just? Is Justin going to lose out and Castagne take the left? Because I, here, I'm, the only game today, Mark Mar is out. Absolutely, yeah. put Mar is in that pocket. Where's Mar? I know. He hasn't found. I know. It, it, after the goal, he, 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 he was kept quiet by Justin. And, yeah, I agree. And I, I am not one, and I'm torn on this, I'm going to be honest with you, because I'm never one for saying that players should just come back in on reputation. If you are injured and the team's doing well without you, you've got to wait your chance. Ricardo, I, I, I've got to go with that. I can't sort of turn turn around. I mean, if he does come back, I think Castagne will move to left back, and unfortunately, I think uh, Justin will um, will be the one that loses out. But he's going to come back in in again, a bit like Madison. I think he'll be drip fed back into the team. Maybe start, you know some of the Europa games and because you know we've got to remember we've got a lot of games coming up oh I'm sure he will get the game time but I, I don't I think like you said there like today with Madison I don't if he if these guys on the left if Justin and Castagne keep performing how they do yeah. with Ricardo expected back in mid up in early to mid up does it does he though I, 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 don't, I, think I, does, I, no. I don't think he does, not on that right side not right now not on that. No. Not on his preferred side. You're not going to remove Castagna out there unless, like you say, it's Justin you're sacrificing. But right yeah. now, on current form, Pratt and Tillemans kept their position ahead of a, a returning Madison. Yeah. If in three games time or however long it is when you're expecting Ricardo to be fully fit, match fit, and ready to play, are you going to turn around to Castagna and Justin and say, "Well done, lads. Brilliant. You've you've not can't fault you, but Ricardo's back now." Yeah, I don't think you are. I think you're gonna to have to edge him back in, and then it's good to see it's healthy competition and it bloods new competition into our side, not just with Amati with um Mendy, but you've now got yeah. Ricardo Madison. You've got a lot of positions fighting for it, and it's exactly what a team needs to keep the hunger going on. What's going to be a long season, and I think as well. To be honest, my thoughts are that, you know, if let's say, for example, you know, he, he does bring Ricardo straight back in, he drops Justin. What is that saying to Justin? You know, he, 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 as a young lad coming in, he's playing well, then, yeah, you drop, you know, even though you've not lost the game, whatever. It's it's not giving him the confidence to, to, to you know, to play well, is it? it again, it all depends how you handle it. I think, because I don't know, um, it's been a bit of a mess since obviously we know how it ended last season. And I'm talking about Europa League and Champions League obviously ended after the season, all that was done. When, when, when is the first, when's the draw for the Europa League group stages? When when does that all start? Because that's normally draw, around that time. Isn't yeah, I it? think the draw is uh, next week. You you carry on talking and I'll just have a look on the, on the site when that is. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. I'll uh, I'll keep going. Um, 
I mean, I, I understand why Ricardo would probably come, why you'd instantly think he'd come back into the team. But if you said on the back, are you really going to turn around to Justin and Castagne on the back of the first three games? You're getting dropped now just because Ricardo's fit. I think you've got to edge him in the way Madison has been into the squad. And this just shows you can't just walk into the squad. We're not a team that's going to go, oh, well, you've done your bit. Thanks very much. But here, here's our main you know, player back in the squad. Yeah. This is great hungry. It's showing that nobody can drop a game because if they drop a game, someone will step in. Yeah. You know, if Ricardo oh. comes in and has a bad game, he's going to go out and Justin will come back in or, or whoever yeah. he does drop for him. And that's yeah. great to see in a good way. Welcome to Pamela. Yeah, well done, you foxes. And it's the 2nd of October is the group stage right. uh, being held in Athens. So um, no, <laughs> next week. Probably this oh, time next week, we, we we should know. Uh, but no, I, I, I agree with you. I don't, um, I'll just say a good evening to Dale as well. Um, high fives all around, high fives back nice to Dale. you. Like that, Dale. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I, don't, I agree with you totally there. I think if a team is playing well, that you know, you can't drop just because a player's coming back. You can't drop another player. I think it sends out the wrong signals, no matter how you explain it to them. And also it makes, you know, players think that they're untouchable. And, oh, it doesn't matter how I play. It's because of who I am. I'll be in anyway. Yeah, exactly. I think there's, there's a few teams in the Premier League, and I'm not going to name them because I'll, I'm not starting a debate, but there's a few teams that you can probably say straight off the bat that probably suffer from that. Uh, big spenders in the likes of, you know, maybe the top end of the Premiership uh, suffer with that, where a player comes in, has a good couple of games, and then gets sold on your yeah. bike because someone's back injured. And look, once we know the Europa League and the fixtures and how they'll go with our league, I'm sure we'll see them chop and change Ricardo, Justin, and, and etc., or Castagne and Justin, etc. And that's the better way to handle it. That would be the better way because I'm sorry if Ricardo comes back and we're let's say unbeaten. I won't say winning five out of five or six out of six yeah. or how many games we played at that point. But let's just say we're having a good run and they're having top performances. I'm sorry, on name alone, you cannot get back into a squad. You do not you do not fix what's not broke. And I can't see anybody getting into that starting eleven. I think I think even though he scored a wonder goal today and won a penalty, I still think unless Pratt's injured, um, he's gonna struggle to get a start and line up in our next game yeah. because there's no re you've got no reason to argue to put Madison over the performance that Pratt and Tillens put in because you're going to drop think, one of them I think it's good I think it was Michael that said earlier that he was annoyed you know that he wasn't in, in the starting lineup. good you know it's making them hungry you know they should want to come on and not expect to come on I mean I, I just can't believe we're, we're having this conversation because I mean we looked at this game and we, we know, we said, and you know, we, we, we said last week that this would be the game that sort of doesn't obviously doesn't define the season by any stretch of the imagination, but it was obviously the biggest um, challenge so far. You know, in played West Brom, who I mean, they showed against Chelsea they weren't um, they weren't the whipping boys, and I. And I noticed, I think you put up in the group when uh, I think we were 3-1 up, uh, you said something about that. And I thought, no, don't, don't say it. You never yeah. know. Look, yeah. look at Chelsea, you look at Chelsea. But, um, you know, I mean, yeah, they had injuries. You could say it wasn't their squad. And you, you said earlier, exactly the same. But it bodes well for the season, doesn't it? It does. This was a game to lay the marker down. I think that was the expression I used when we did the, when we talked about it briefly after the Arsenal game uh, yeah. in the Cup. And I said, this is a game where it might we might not get the result, which we bloody well did, obviously. Yeah. But back, you know, we we were we're not fortune tellers. We didn't know this back then. And and we both said, is you know the performance is what's key. Good performance results a bonus. It's a bloody big bonus because it's made it three wins out of three, obviously, and it's great in yeah. hindsight. But the performance, you know, if we'd have been come off that pitch with a, a one all draw and, and Man City's had 23 shots and we'd had one and, and that you'd have made it gone, oh, that's papered over the cracks. We got a bit fortunate. We absolutely dominated them second half. We didn't just yeah. beat Man City. We tore them to shreds. We yeah. absolutely tore them to shreds and that is what you take. That's a, that's a big marker. 
That's a big Mark, Mark Gatwood, good evening and welcome along. Not expected. <laughs> That's going to be the no, understatement. You're telling me, mate. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> expected to be the understatement. <laughs> you know, like like you said, I had to take the one all at half time, blow your whistle oh, now. Yeah. Let's go. You know. Um and this is this is Dale. Trouble with Madison is he does something good one in every 20 games. I think that's a bit harsh. I think that is a bit harsh, but I do get his point. There was points at last season before his injury, he did go missing for a few games, but so did the squad. So hopefully, yeah, fingers crossed with what we've seen early doors. And the second, you know, the plan B is it was today that worked yeah. to a T, you know, to perfection as the word perfection is the word of the day. I'm sorry, it yeah. is. It's the word of the yeah. day to describe that performance on a whole. But it's it's kind of maybe like them pieces of the dicks over the last two seasons, or however long it is, Brendan's been a season and a half, two seasons, Brendan's now been in charge of us. You can see them pieces are sitting nicely. They're not so jagged. Yeah. The nice and smooth and they're fitting perfectly together and there's no reason yeah. why we can't keep that going throughout the season and um be challenging um dare i say up oh, there again <laughs> dare i dare yeah. i i just uh J js i think uh welcome js uh again another understatement okay. there fabulous performance uh God, you I think I, beat I, man city yeah <laughs> Um, and Mark again, Mad has hit the post a late game. He came on a sub. Um, so I'm not sure what that's supposed to say there. Um, let me just get this up, see if anybody else can help me with Let's this. See if I can, um, yeah, Mad has hit the post. I think he means he, it's, oh, scored. Oh, Sorry, he game. scored. Yeah, still this game as yeah. sub. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm pleased about, and I don't know if you watched the uh Tottenham Newcastle game before. Leicester, I just uh, had a had a quick look at it as like the warm up, you know. I thought before before the before the the main match, we'll just have the sort of the undercard. Um, we, the had, undercard. Yeah. <laughs> we had three penalties, and not and we're not even talking VAR. And I think no. after the after the disgrace, and I'm not a I'm not a Spuds fan at all, but I think they they were definitely robbed. But leaving that aside. Um, it, yeah, it's nice to say that we had three penalties and we didn't, you know, have to re re resort to VAR. You know, quick, they seem to be quick decisions. And, and you don't and, even remember seeing them on the screen as a replay like you normally do. It was literally to uh, the air and you just went, no, yeah, yeah. penalty. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. So just to end with a few comments here. Defence looked very balanced with Amati there. Brendan got his tactics spot on today. He certainly did. Um, if Alex Bennett does not give Brendan Rodgers a 10, you need to have words with him. <laughs> your, your first time in well. history, a team gets three. Is it first time in history? Is it? Oh I asked that question. Oh. Yeah. I asked that question. I'm I not. I'm, not times, sure. it was I, before. I'm only a young lad, so I don't know, you know. And can I just say, just yet, yeah, Alan Bennett has put his results in, and you can see them in the Facebook group and on uh, com. I should have called it something a lot easier. Um, he's given <laughs> Jamie Vardy was his man of the match. I think that, that goes, yeah. nobody goes without saying. And yet yeah, he gave a 10 to uh, the manager's performance. I think he did get it spot on, despite what we all thought at the start and had ha, ha, ha head in our hands and he gave the team a 10 as well oh and good because i think he'd have had pitchforks at his doors if he gave any less <laughs> the thing i love about that and i, and I love everybody's contributions etc is I, I ask alan to do that and it is purely his opinions and it is all about opinions and and yeah, alan's Alan won't mind me saying he's a, a more mature uh, fan, shall we say, and uh, he's seen he's seen some things, and he tends to look at it as, as as a game, you know, as a whole, not just sort of a half here or half there. But yeah, I think he got it spot on today, ten out of ten. Um, Michael, three stone cold penalties. Yeah, they were uh, they were they were scored by fouls. You can't you can't begrudge yeah. us for having three penalties when they're that clear and obvious. Oh, it didn't. It didn't yeah. just the Tottenham game was absolute mare. It was second to the Manchester United game. Good job. We're not yeah. commentating on that one. I'd have to flip the lip. <laughs> you would do living in Manchester. Oh yeah, God. But, yeah. Um, yeah. We've got um, West Ham next, who are going to be playing Wolves. Very. If they're not kicked off yet, they're playing Wolves. We've got West I think Ham they have next. Just kicked off yeah. in the next minute or two. 
who haven't had the best start, uh, West Ham. Um, both of us after a central defender, both of us after Fafana, and both of us after Trakowski from Burnley as well. Uh, we've got to feel confident going into that game, don't we? I wouldn't like to be West Ham. That's a dangerous performance. That's a uh, that is a dangerous performance. If you if you're going to go to Leicester and you've just you know their manager David Moyes probably looked at Leicester and thinking well they, they might come out as where can we exploit them? Well, you know if Leicester decide to come out and shut up shop and and hit you on the counter like they can, I would not like to be David Moyes because he's going to have a tactical headache. But let's not take anything for granted. We saw what West Brom did to Chelsea, albeit I heard the Jaws music of me karma strike me in that game near enough, but. Yeah. Football's a funny old game. Let's not take anything for granted. No. Let's enjoy this result. And because you asked me to, and because I promised it, I said I'd do it again if we'd manage this one. We are top of league. Said so we are top of league. And let's just enjoy it. Let's enjoy it. <laughs> as fans. Can I just say thank God there's no X Factor this year? <laughs> oh, what do you mean, Golden Buzzer? That? That's a Golden Buzzer. <laughs> I'm a card hey. sign of me. When you're surrounded by 25,000 other Leicester fans singing it, you sound like Pavarotti when you're on your own. <laughs> you don't, I like to put it that way. But, hey, no, thanks for doing it. We are top of the league. Um, very, yeah, sorry, very, no, sorry, very happy. Everything. Yeah, I, I just want the games to come now. I just, obviously, you know. But we've got to temper it, and we'll finish on this note. We've got to temper it. Let's not forget last season. Oh yeah, of course. And look, it's part and parcel of football. You've got to enjoy the highs, and you've got to you've yeah. got to you know, you've got to dig out through the lows. And 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 a common point that I want to make is look, every set of fans has them fans that will stick their knife in when results or performances aren't good, and then they'll be hallelujah and, and praising everybody when they win. It's part and parcel of football. It's part and parcel of being a fan. And look, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but. I'm not going to be begrudged. And nobody's going to ruin my mood. Say what they like to me today. We've just beat Man City. That, see, there you go. Yeah. West Ham bad start beating Wolves 1-0. So don't take anything for granted. Let's enjoy the moment. Let's celebrate the weekend. Let's maybe have a few hangovers on the Monday morning. And just like the lads will, when they're back in training, let's look forward to West Ham. And let's not, let's not, have a have an oopsie after three fantastic games and the most perf perfect performance I've seen in a long time for Leicester. Yeah. I think that, that that's Craig that uh, gave us a score update there. So thanks for that, Craig. Um, yeah. Here's Jeff. A few more uh, comments. Rogers has charged. Uh, Rogers has charged. Rogers has changed the end of last season. Hang on, am I reading this right? I've had too much to drink. Rogers has changed the end of last season rapidly. He's done well. Yes, he certainly has. That's Mark again. Um, yeah, he's made that thing of the past, great, hasn't it? Yeah, great show as always, uh, gent. Thank you. Cheers for that, Mark. Much You're welcome, Thank you. And, uh, um, Make sure you hit subscribe on the YouTube channel when this goes exactly. up. Exactly. that much. Yeah, and thank you. And Dale, uh, we're going to end with this one. It looked like the team's actually enjoying playing. It does. They didn't, you know, they don't look scared, do they? They look like they're having fun out there, which is what it's all about. That's exactly what it's all about. And if you can go out there and have fun, you get, you, you're get going to get the result that you, you warranted or wanted on the day. And that's exactly what happened again today. I can't say it enough. It was another, it was a, it was a perfect perfectly executed tactical game that we have won again we did it right West Brom we did it right against Burnley and we got it right again against Man City and you don't don't like you don't score 12 goals and only concede four in playing the sort of oppositions we did you know remember half of them goals were conceded today we'd have only conceded two yeah. with, before that had we been a bit more switched on in the giddy moments of Burnley yeah. And, and Burnley aren't are, Burnley aren't anybody's fault by any stretch of the imagination. We've got to remember they're a, you know they're a strong mid-table team that we don't always beat. You know, but no, uh, no that's very true. Brad, thanks very much for uh, joining again. Much appreciated. No worries, pal. Any time. I'm, I'm off to go and join me pre-match for the third time. <laughs> I'm going to go and watch the highlights. I'm going to go and watch yes. the highlights again. Um, We've, we've, well, no, I'm not even sure when we've got West Ham. Is it uh, Saturday or Sunday? And I'm not sure. Up, 
seems to be a Sunday, seems to be a pattern for us. And now, now look, it'll be a Monday night game. I, I don't even think it's on TV, so we, 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 we might have a bit of fun next week. But, Brad, yeah. thanks very much, mate. You take care and stay safe. And you, mate, look after yourself. It's been a pleasure, as always. And, uh, and you, mate, and you. Uh, thanks to everybody for, for tuning in, watching in. As Brad said, um, this is on Facebook, but if you give me 10 minutes, it will be uploaded on to a YouTube channel, which is Lester Till I Die TV. Please subscribe. Hit the link below when it's on YouTube and subscribe. And don't forget, we've got the website, lestertillidie.com and um, Twitter at Lester TID and also uh, Instagram Lester Till I Die 1. Again, all the links will be on the YouTube post. Guys, I'm going to go off, do a few more posts, get the match report up, which I'm sure will be very good this week. I might also just treat myself to a little drink tonight. If you can't celebrate and you can't uh, when you win, when can you celebrate? Like I said before, it's been like watching Brazil. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks a lot for all your comments. You make it what it's worth. And I'll see you on Tuesday night for the Tuesday night show with Craig and then the Opposition View show next Friday and then a probably post-match again with Brad. Guys, stay safe, look after yourselves and take care. And thanks for all your support. Have a good weekend or what's left of it.